personal motto for me is, I always ask, is it a no for forever? So are you telling me no forever? Or are you telling me no for now? And most people will be a no for now. Um, you know, a few people would be like, no, it's a no for forever. You're never going to get it. It's never going to happen. But if it's a no for for now, I can be like, okay, cool. What can I be doing in the interim to make sure that you can't say no again? My personal motto is don't let fear stop you from doing anything that you want to do. Um, my mum taught it to me when I was really young that fear isn't real and if it scares you, you probably means that you want to do it and that you should do it. And I, I kind of live by that. If there's a situation or I, I want to talk to someone or I'm scared to get on the stage or I'm scared to say something or write a lyric that means something to me, then I realise that probably means I should be doing it and it means I'm stepping outside of my comfort zone. My personal motto would be make sure that the route you choose in the music industry is something you're really passionate about because you're going to be spending a lot of time doing it and it's hard work. So choose something you really love. I think so far, so far my most memorable moment as a professional has been getting actually getting the radio show because I'd been working at the BBC for five years prior, um, really trying to get a show. So every year I'd be like, um, you know, putting in a demo or, you know, trying to get a show. And they'd be like, no, you're not ready yet. No, you're not good enough. Um, OK, you're good, but no one knows who you are. OK, you're getting better, but you're not what we're looking for. And for five years, it was like, uh, you know, continuously no, uh, until the point that I was kind of like, oh, I'm not even, you know what? I get to produce an amazing radio show. I was producing Todd T. Um, I had my own show outside that was doing really well and growing on SoundCloud. So I was like, nah, I didn't even need this place. And then that's when I got the show. But I think that moment, I think, definitely showed me that if I could literally do whatever I, I put my mind to. It might take a long time, but I think I have the uh, resistance to do it. This is a really hard question. I've had so many memorable moments. Um, but I think my most memorable moment is kind of my growth as an artist. And I guess my first body of work that I released my first EP where I really delved into what I wanted to talk about and I started really expressing how I felt about the world. Um, yeah, and that was, that was really important for me because it meant that I was finally saying what I wanted to say and having the confidence to say it. My most memorable moment in my career, I guess, has to be being selected as number three on the BBC Women's Hour power list after Taylor Swift and Beyonce. That was a pretty mind-blowing moment. I think what I've learnt from Key Change is that if you find a cause that everyone is really confused about how to approach, then it can really take off and suddenly you can be managing a kind of global movement. So I suppose it's, a lot of it is all about timing and about being really sensitive to what the most urgent needs are out there and then you can really make change. Um, I think I learned from my early career uh, patience, definitely a lot of patience. And I think um, being dedicated to your craft I think for me, um, the things that I've learned that I've applied, not even just from my early career, but even I think from school and the way I guess I approached uh, maybe education and learning is, the, is how I approach, um, how I perfect my craft now. So I'm very kind of like, I listen back to all my radio shows or, you know, in terms of DJing, like um, I started DJing a lot later than, um, than most people. So I didn't start DJing until like four, four or five years ago. Um, but I know how good of a DJ I want to be. So even if I'm not it yet, I will always put in, you know, so many hours into practicing or learning new things. Or um, so I think that kind of the, the early things that I've learned is definitely perfecting and working on your craft. Always, it never ends. I guess what I learned from my early career was that confidence, self-value, um, insecurities play a big part in your productivity as an artist and as a person. And I guess as I worked out or how, as I realised how gendered those ideas were, the idea of being insecure about a number of things, of being unconfident in so many aspects, not being able to speak up, was ju were just hindering me from um, being who I wanted to be or who, being who I knew I could be. Um, and I think I had to really fight that as I, as I got older, if I wanted to be successful and if I wanted to be strong and powerful and empowering for other people and women, then I had to get past those fears. 
and kind of come out of myself based on the way that I think I've been conditioned as a woman to be. So that was, I guess, the most difficult part of my career. I think my biggest challenges today are kind of almost, it kind of like is like the oxymoron to what I've just been speaking about, the persistence, the dedication to your hard craft. I think my personal biggest challenge is, is being a perfectionist to the point that I can be very hard on myself and not see what was good, or if someone was like, oh yeah, but it was good, but if I don't think it's good, then I can't get over it not being, not being perfect. And I think um, in terms of things like music, music's not meant to be perfect, because it's meant to be a feeling. So it's kind of like I have to like, have this internal battle with myself on trying to be perfect, but then remembering that I, I can't be, it's, not, it's impossible. So I think that's my, that's my personal biggest challenge. And then I think, um, I think in terms of actually, um, in the, in the work life, I think my biggest challenge is to keep on challenging myself. I think that's it. I think to keep on finding new things to, to learn, finding new strings to add to my bow, um, and finding new ways to keep on evolving. I think it's all about evolution. Challenges for me, particularly as Chief Exec of PRS Foundation, is how do we support all of the artists that need our help? Obviously, we've been doing a lot to encourage artists from all backgrounds. But who, whatever the artist's backgrounds are, it's potentially harder than it's ever been to kind of make ends meet at those very early stages. So it's always for us about how do we make sure we're selecting the right artists and find more resource to kind of be able to support more of them. I think I have the, the strength and the kind of confidence to say what I want to say. I think as an independent artist, it's kind of... The challenges are mostly financial because you're independent, so I rely mostly on funding, um, on shows, and I guess because of the kind of gender gap, being like pay for shows and things like that, it's really important. Or even campaigns, making sure I'm paid the same amount as a, the male, um, the other male person, which often I'm not, and so put, my putting that into contracts and making sure that there is gender equality, I think. That's a really huge part, a really huge challenge that you have to kind of get straight away if you want to get somewhere. You've got to make sure that you can fund your project so that you don't rely on someone else to do it for you. It's being self-sufficient and being independent is really, really important. I think really, really important for young female artists in the beginning of their career. I think my message would be, I think change is coming. I think we're living through some of the most exciting times within music, uh, within technology, um, and within the sort of... Uh, People thinking more about diversity on, on all levels, not, you know, not just gender, but race, but uh, you know, age, uh, sexuality, um, you know, disabilities. I think we, we always forget disabilities when we talk about um, diversity, and we need to think more about that. So I think that change is coming, and I think we all need to uh, be a part of it, um, be a part of the change, be on the right side of history, basically. It's up to us to be on the right side of history. I think that is a really difficult question, um, and I think... There's a lot of conversation that needs to be had between the industry and the artist or the audience and the artist. And I think it's just about working together and it's about, as an independent artist, I still need a lot of aspects from the industry. And, and I don't think you need to be signed to a label or a major label in order to have that conversation. I think it's about, about in the kind of new era of a lot more independence as artists, a lot more DIY self-starters. Us finding a way to be flexible and work together in a way that uplifts both sides, instead of it being that one-way traditional dynamic. Well, what would my message to the music industry be? Um, I would say now is the moment when we really can all work together to accelerate change, and let's not overlook the talent of half of our population and let's encourage more women into the industry and more people of all backgrounds so that the future is even brighter than it is now.